So guys, today Wuthering Waves released an update regarding their future and regarding some of the issues and what are they gonna do about it. So without wasting your time, let's start reading and discussing it. Dear Rovers, Greetings, we are the Wuthering Waves developer team. Since the official launch of Wuthering Waves, we have received a lot of valuable feedback and suggestions through social medias and in-game surveys. We are genuinely grateful for your attention and support. We apologize for deficiencies and issues present in Watering Waves, our first fully independently developed and globally published game at Kuro Games, which admittedly I didn't know this was their first fully developed game, but that's something to keep in mind, I guess. We understand that this has affected your gaming experience and we are working to improve it for those who love this game. We have been working on optimizations and iterations for the current 1.0 version and the development of subject version updates is also underway. Below we'll address some of the most discussed and concerned about issues. And so there we go, let's begin with issue number one, that would be the echo development experience. And the problem according to them is echo development feels too grindy and there is inadequate energy materials. For which I have to say, yeah, absolutely, 100% true. Grinding echoes definitely feels a bit of a grind and if you think about, let's say Genshin, it's not exactly the shining star, it still feels a tiny bit grindy in Genshin, but nowhere near as bad as here, that's 100% sure. And at least in Genshin you can kind of use any of the artifacts you get to use as XP, while here you only can use the XP materials or exactly the same kind of echo, which is sucks, right? So let's read what you have to say about it. We are aware of the common concern in community that the echo currently leveling experience feels too grindy and that the game lacks wave plate storage system. Again, very much true. We have confirmed and will implement the following adjustments. In the current version, we will launch a limited time echo material double yield event called Cord Cleansing. Okay, well, it may be just, you know, a band-aid and a temporary solution, but, you know, if they can only do their proper solution in the next patch, we'll take the temporary solution any day, it's still gonna make our life a little bit easier and we'll take that, okay. In version 1.1, we will adjust the progression system to reduce the shell credit cost of echo development, which again is kind of also true because I upgraded only a few echoes and I spend like <laughs> most of the credits I had, like I, I think like a million or something, like, like it was a lot, like almost all of it was gone, not cheap by any means. In version 1.1, we will remove the reward cutscene for the tacit fields. Eh, I guess alright. I don't know. Doesn't make that much difference to me. From version 1.1 and forward, the yield of echo and echo development materials will be increased. Now, because they did not say how much, it's hard to say well whether this is gonna be, you know, incremental changes or big changes, but still a step in positive direction. So, thumbs up. In upcoming updates, we will introduce the wave plate storage system which is double thumbs up that's awesome that is good overall i think these are good changes yeah i mean it's hard to say how significant at particularly this one's gonna be but they are giving us a temporary solution and then hopefully a full solution so we'll see second issue regarding our handling of reward system error when recycling developed echoes on May 29th, we were notified of an issue with an echo recycling system where the amount of shell credits players obtained when recycling developed echoes were wrong. Since this is an issue that directly impacts the game balance, we fixed this problem through an emergency live update on the same night and issued compensations. As part of the measures to minimize the event's impact on fairness within the player community, we informed the players of the situation and announced that we would remove all additional shell credits obtained unexpectedly. As a result of these bugs, within 14 business days, and issue compensation accordingly. However, due to the urgency of this issue, we failed to issue an announcement, which regrettably caused negative experience from our players. We sincerely apologize and so on and so forth. So they're sorry about it, you know, I guess. 
let's cut them some slack what do you guys think following eternal discussions we have decided to compensate all the players with the shell credits based on the maximum amount of shells that can be unexpectedly yield through this bug we will round up to the nearest whole number and provide extra compensations to all players as 1 million shells so so i guess everybody's gonna get a nice 1 million which is cool i like it again thumbs up they messed up at least they, they're doing something about it and you're gonna receive the million on june 10th which is not that far away but you had to create a character before may 30th and a character that can use mail so if you just created a character in the last few days unfortunately there's gonna be nothing for you sucks but it is what it is additionally to address the poor experience with ecosystem we will compensate all rovers with crystal solvents 20 of those and one of those equals to 60 wave plates so that is actually pretty big i mean 20 is a lot like <laughs> really a lot that is actually pretty nice i mean it takes a while to get even a few of them and to get 20 that's quite a lot and to remind you wave plates are the energy that you use to do tacit fields weekly bosses and so on and these you're gonna receive well tomorrow if you're watching this video today but it's june 3rd but for this one you only need to have unlocked mailbox and you do not need to create account before may 30th so this one is gonna be pretty much for everybody again so far so nice on the error in the five star weapon description ah i know what they're talking about as has been discovered by our players the description of the five star weapon verdant summit that is the best in slot weapon for uh Gian. that is his signature weapon that's the one that is currently on the event banner in the game in certain languages contain it a mistranslation upon discovering this issue we promptly corrected the description and issued compensation to all rovers we also have initiated a comprehensive internal review of localized versions of the in-game text across the languages that we support any corrections or improvements made during this process will be included in the upcoming updates we sincerely apologize for the mistake and we want to reassure you that we are committed to continuously improving the game so what they're talking about there we go let's just quickly read increases the damage bonus of all resonant attributes by 12 percent every time intro skill or resonance liberation is cast i think in japan there was mistranslation and it didn't include this word and it was just resonance so people thought every time you use pre pretty much a basic attack or like a heavy attack or like an intro skill you would get 12 percent increased damage right and it would also increase heavy attack damage and it would stack up to two times but actually it's a resonance liberation skill which is your r that's your ultimate which takes time to load up right that's a huge difference difference between resonance and resonance liberation is a massive difference and people spend a lot of money thinking that they're gonna you know get this massive damage increase every time they use their skill every time they use their pretty much basic attack then got to find out that actually it's only when you use your ultimate and now you spend a lot of money and your damage didn't increase that much and they got really pissed off so that's what are they talking about and so in the meantime we will offer one-time compensation of forging tides oh yeah yeah th these are the ones to summon weapons got it got it got it got it so they're gonna give five forging tides to try to you know summon weapon to all rovers known to have localization issues so this is only for people that were affected by it which is nice but you know if you spend a lot of money you know what's five it's nothing right this is what maybe like six seven percent of the pool yeah i think this is not enough i think people that were affected by this mistranslation should get i don't know maybe even just completely refunded or something I, I don't know like not in terms of the money but just give them full refund on these right i mean at the end of the day these are just pixels to you you already took the money anyway i don't know i don't think this is good enough but this is not for like the majority of the people this is for like a very small amount of people that you know spend a whole bunch of money to c5 it and you know to refine it to c5 and then just to realize that it's not gonna do much so yeah again i don't think this is good enough but i i don't know 
if you were affected by this, I feel sorry for you, I guess, but yeah, it is what it is. As we endeavor to constantly improve the local localization quality across different languages, we encourage you to provide us with your comments, suggestions, and blah, blah, blah. Well, essentially, you're just asking you to, you know, give some feedback. And if you are affected by this, you will receive it on June 3rd. The third issue, on version events. We have received extensive feedback on duration and rewards of Overdash Club, which is the event currently going on right now where you need to dash through some stuff, which is a pretty simple event. Nothing really interesting, but I guess easy as stride, so to say. To address your concerns, we currently in the process of redesigning the rules and reward scheme for the upcoming events and immediate solutions are below. First, we will introduce new limited time special event, watering exploration to offer new rewards and new content to improve your gaming experience, which is good because there just isn't enough content in the game right now, so anything is better than nothing. And the current event is just... It's not even an event, if I'm being honest. Like, it literally takes you five seconds to do it. It's not interesting. The rewards are like meh at best. I guess the rewards are meeting the amount of time that you're gonna spend doing it because it takes like two seconds to do it. Like, honestly, like no more than 30 seconds to do a full run and get the rewards. So I guess they're meeting the expectations, but it's just a crappy event with crappy rewards right now. That's all there is to it. So hopefully the watering exploration is gonna be something a little bit more interesting. It will start on June 13 and go through June 27th. It will include 800 asteroids, which is quite a lot more than it is than it is right now. I think the current event is like 300 or so, and 60 something like that, which, like I said, it's nothing. And we'll also include some of these other stuff like echoes and so on. Moving forward, we shall ensure we make greater collective endeavors internally in designing version events to improve the event content quality and rewards for your better experience. Again, I hope they increase their work on this a lot because the current event sucks. I do not even dare to call it an event. You know, those challenges where you need to run is the same, but it's like extended to, you know, go like maybe 10 seconds longer. That's it. It's not even an event. I mean, if you look at Genshin and their last event where they had pretty much a hide and seek event, but also the ones that hide can transform into like chairs and stuff. And the one that is seeking, you know, still needs to find you, even though you're transformed into a box or a chair or something, you know, that's actually quite fun. And you are playing with other people as well. That's an event. This right now, the way we have in watering waves, it's not an event. It's just like nothing really. Issue number four on the future versions update timeline. Since the official launch of Watering Waves, we have received extensive feedback regarding the game's storyline, localization, and various other aspects. We have been listening closely and grateful for the continued enthusiasm and support from our players, which has exceeded our expectations, which that I can believe there's quite a lot of people playing this game right now. To allow everyone early access to experience more content and features of the game in version 1.0, we decided to advance the release of subsequent content in version 1.0. Starting on June 6th, this release will include the companion story, solitary path for Resonator Yelin, I think? I, I don't know. I think it's Yelin. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, guys. The feature Resonator Convenience event when the thunder pours for Yulin, the limited time challenge event Alloy Smelt, along with many other spin off events and features. Again, this is all good because, just like I mentioned in this video, if you want to check it out, I think that Wuwa right now kinda has a little bit of a content problem in the sense that there isn't enough content, like you just finished the game too fast, like there isn't much to do at all. I know that this is a new game, but it still is a problem, just because this is a new game, it doesn't remove the problem, you know what I mean? So any and all new content is very much welcomed. Watering Waves version 1.0 will last until June 28th, after we will schedule server downtime and implement update of version 1.1 which will include a new area, Mount Firmament, new Resonator Jinshi and Changli, and a new boss, Yue. Jue or Yue, I'm not sure. 
So actually they are releasing the 1.1 pretty quickly, the game has been up, up what, couple of weeks by now? So they are on a pretty good schedule. To compensate for any inconvenience caused by this version timing adjustments, we will issue compensation to all rovers of Radiant Tide times 10. Radiant Tides are the ones that you use to wish for event, so this is the juicy one, the good one. Thank you for your understanding and continued support and so on and so forth. Distribution event, June 3rd, tomorrow, so tomorrow we're gonna <laughs> get a lot of stuff. The fifth issue on combat and control experience optimization. We heard your feedback regarding the poor experience with auto aiming and auto lock. Oh boy, that is absolutely true. Especially if you are like near a cliff or a mountain or something where the monster can jump off, it's awful. And sometimes you use your echo ability like a Q and it just starts attacking nothing. There may be like four or five monsters around you and it attacks nothing. They really need to improve that. Like it's not so terrible you couldn't play, but it is really annoying. They will also improve controls, key remapping, requirements and game feel design. Based on the issue that repeatedly came up in the player discussions, we have identified the following issues and will address them. Auto-aiming, auto-locking and camera performance in the battle. In recent updates, we have disabled the combat camera correction feature on PC by default. We have also optimized the default values and ranges for camera combat settings. Again, like I said, they need to improve that. This is not even debatable. Th that is definitely good that they are addressing it, because that's something that needs improvement. Bosses exiting combat stayed unexpectedly. In recent updates, we have optimized the aggro ranges for certain bosses, including the Thundering Memphis, Crownless, and so on. And... I think they need to optimize this even a little bit more. Last times I played, some of these bosses attack you from like a mile away. Like you're still so far away and they're attacking you, which is pretty crazy. In the coming updates, they will also introduce a warning feature. Ghost touch issues on mobile. I don't play on mobile. I cannot comment anything about it at all. But we're still gonna read it. In recent updates, we have experienced anti-ghost touch area around buttons. Future versions will include further optimizations for mobile controls. So I guess they're gonna improve the controls on mobile as well. Delayed availability of custom key binding features. In version 1.1, they will unlock custom key binding feature and it will be lowered to Union level 2. It should be lowered to I enter the game and I can immediately do that. That's when it should be unlocked. But that still is good. We will also introduce a new player tutorial for custom key binding and they will gradually support more key binding options. Good, that's that's good, that's actually really good. Controller mode optimizations. Again, I don't play on controller, no idea if there's any problems in there. But in 1.1, they will remap the current controller of open chat to open map, which hopefully for you guys that's gonna be an improvement. I don't know, I don't play on that. Poor game field design and impact signification. In future versions, we will constantly improve the event signification and game field design for characters and monsters, enhancing the overall combat experience. I think combat right now is one of the best things about this game. I think this is the only reason I'm kind of still playing this game because there's really not much to do in there, but I really like the combat, so it, I'm, I kind of want to come back, you know, every other day just to kind of, you know, kill some monsters, enjoy the combat, because otherwise there's just not enough content right now. So combat is great, auto-aiming not so much, but if they can improve auto-aiming and then even, you know, somehow improve the combat even further, it's gonna be great. Issue number six on other contents. No purchase limits for store items like flour. Okay, that makes sense. Audio and sound effect bugs. Sometimes you use abilities and there's no audio or monsters have no audio. And I'm not the only one experiencing that because I read your comment, guys. I know you're experiencing that as well. And apparently they also know that this, this is the case and they will fix them in the upcoming updates. Performance issues, crashes and instability. Oh, this is a big one because there's quite a little bit of performance issue in the game and crashes and everything like that. And boy, 
a lot of people experiencing that. In recent updates, we have fixed crash and instability. If issues affecting certain devices, I can immediately tell you not good enough because I know a lot of people still experiencing issues. I lag from time to time, but it's nowhere near as bad anymore. So they are improving it, but it's still not there. It's still not perfect. We are currently identifying the causes of other crash reports and will continue to implement fixes. I hope they're gonna fix this one as soon as possible because I think if they're gonna lose most amount of players, it's gonna be this and the lack of content. And I think this one's gonna be even bigger than the lack of content. Because the lack of content you can kind of fill with events and stuff, but this you need to fix or you're gonna lose players. It's simple as that. Depths of Elusive Realm, event optimizations and updates. We have received numerous player feedback and suggestions of Depths of Elusive Realm, event version in 1.0. In the upcoming version 1.1, we will further improve this event, add new content, including more playable characters, new challenges and blah blah blah. And they really need to do that. Because, you know, I have almost 80% of all the playable characters in the game right now. I can barely use any of them. You know, and if they're not leveled up, it's a problem. So yeah, this needs improvement. Like, I like how you travel through the stages. That's pretty cool, but that's about the only cool thing about this event. It really needs improvements. Apart from the adjustments mentioned above, we recognize that there are still many issues in the game that are affecting player experience. We are committed to listening to every single piece of feedback, continuously organizing, optimizing, blah blah blah. We will share and communicate updates. They talk a little bit about their global release. And finally, we're sincerely thankful to all Roguevers for your continuous attention and unwavering support for Wuthering Waves. Overall, I think this is very positive. Um, I think the biggest issues I kind of have with this is if you are one of these people and you're only gonna receive this, this is not good enough. I also think while this is nice and all, but it's not good enough just yet. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, everything else seems to be pretty good. What can I say? They're gonna do some compensations. They're gonna do improvements. They're gonna rework some of the events, add more events because they realize the ones we have right now are not good enough and just not interesting enough, not rewarding enough either. Overall, yeah, some positive changes, some good stuff coming up in the future, not far from now. And let me know what do you guys think about this news? Are you excited about all of the the new content they announce here, the rewards, the events, the compensations. Um, do, you ha do you have any problems with any of, you know, that they said in this statement? Let me know that in the comment. But yeah, overall, I think this is pretty positive. The game is going in a positive direction. The Wuthering Waves team seems to, you know, not only care, but most importantly, actually talk to us and, you know, give us this long, long post about, you know, what's coming up, what's the issues and just letting us know that they are aware of the issues and they are listening to us and that is positive. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this little update, uh, hit the like button, subscribe and I'll see you guys somewhere out there in Genshin, in Wuthering Waves or any other game. But for now, take care. I'll see you guys next time.